Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. I was browsing through the statistics on HS Replay, looking at okay, what kind of decks are performing right now, and one pretty curious deck that I came across was this one, uh, Highlander Paladin. And I've also met this a couple of times on the ladder. I mostly won, but I've also lost a game or two against this, so now that I found the deck list on HS Replay, I just had to give it a try. And is Highlander Paladin any good? Well, what does it do even? It's a mid-range deck. It has a secret opener, so it has a bunch of secrets here. Secret Keeper, Mysterious Blade, Sun River Spy, Mask Contender, Bell Ring a Sentry. So the classic Paladin secret package. So that secret package helps it through the early game. But after that, it transitions into this weird... There's some mechs in it. There's like a Predable Fame bot, Snip Snap Annoia module. There's some buffs with kings, there's a little bit of AoE, a little bit more mechs, Leroy giving reach, Walkia potentially giving reach, Siamat as a big threat, Octosari for a big refill, Tyrion Fordring, the classic paladin curve topper for mid-range paladin lists. So clearly this is no aggro list, and clearly this is no control list either, it does not have tools to really control the game. Consecration is its means of dealing with the whiteboard. It's just a secret package for the early game, a bunch of mechs, a little bit of reach and some buffs. All crammed into one, and then there's the Highlander Synergy cards. So if of the Sands, you can get a better hero power, and of course Zepris Decorate for lethals, for board clears, for whatever you happen to need. It's a pretty interesting and kind of fun deck to play because it has a little bit of everything. You just put everything together and off you go. As for its performance, HS Replay had it rocking like 55% win rate from rank legend to 5. And I 6% when I played this for an evening. So obviously that is not a stunning success. But I mean, the deck is able to actually win some games. It might even be viable for slow climbing. And it's of course ridiculously expensive because of all the legendary cards in it. And it kind of needs most of those legendary cards. Commander Risa is probably the worst card in the entire deck and likely shouldn't even be in this deck. I wouldn't even run Risa in most secret paladin builds to be honest. But everything else does have a purpose. There's the synergy cards, there's the mech cards, there's the refill. There's the big threats, there's the reach. All of that is useful. So pretty interesting deck. And the current meta is really interesting in that there are lots of decks like this that are like kind of mediocre, but still somewhat playable. Very open-ended meta in the end, even though there are of course some decks that are just clearly above decks like this one. As for the mulligans with this deck, well, you're looking for your early game cards. The one drops are good. If you have like Secret Keeper or another Secret Synergy card, then you can keep a secret. But as usual with decks like this, where there's a bunch of secrets and very few Synergy cards, don't keep secrets unless you also have something to play with them. Zephyrus the Great can also be a great card to keep already in the mulligan. It can really help you and bell ring a sentry of the more expensive cards because that's just a great tempo swing. If you enjoyed this content then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now let's go take a look at a couple of games with Highlander Paladin in action. Let's see I can maybe try this. Priest kept one card so this should still be a one drop. There was no one drop. Do I need to coin myself on this board? Because then that's injured Tolvir. I can't deal with an injured Tolvir. No, I, I'm, I must not coin myself on this board. That that coined, coined board is not strong enough. There is the injured Tolvir. It just wasn't the card that I thought it would be. It's relatively unlikely to be able to kill this. Well, he could like heal any nerf fire. But if he does heal any nerf fire, I can go and choose a champion to kill that. So, I still think this is the line. Circle is more scary. Oh, no, there's the circle. 
There is the circle indeed. That circle is scary. Replicating mana is only four attack. Can't deal with this. You can double attack to kill the mummy. Coin choose the champion, I kill one of these. This kind of deck runs silence too. I think I probably just need to do it like this. Just get some stuff out there. Try to go a little wider. See if I can maybe do things from here. So much depends on whether he has any of the combo pieces, of course. Because those could be huge. This could be a really big deal after a double tall beer. Okay, so another Crystallogy turn. If I do Replicating Menace, I still need to attack both in to kill just one of these. He can have Pyromancer and he can have Silence, so no matter which route I pursue, there are risks involved. I still try the Replicating Menace here. And I kill one of the two here. There can also be a Psycho Pump. Which would be scary. Is there, there's no reason for me to go into Crystallogy. I might even need to do like Coin Siamat at some point. Okay, now it's a Pyromancer, it seems. Not a Pyromancer. Okay, neither of those is a Pyromancer. That's good so far. Because now I could Coin to get double Snip Snaps out there. And that means that I can kill the tall beer. And I don't leave anything that the Acolyte of Pain can value trade into. Unless there's of course more silences. Which there can be. But it's snip snap there. Then we coin another snip snap here. And all of these together can take down the injured tall beer. And leaves me a couple of three attack minions on the board against the Acolyte. Alright, but Acolyte can be buffed. And he can also just trade away a 3 2 and then attack Acolyte into a 1 1, I suppose. But it's not like I had a lot of great options there. As long as he can't fight a Psycho Pump, there's a chance. Okay, three more mana. Well, there's no more tall beers. Not enough mana to play a Psycho Pump right now. Okay, so far this looks okay, right? I can play Crystallogy here. Grabs me that Glowtron. So then I can magnetize Glowtron on this to kill the Light Warden. And I could kill both Clerics. But do I just kill one Cleric and the Acolyte? Probably, yeah. So Glowtron is magnetized here. And then I'll play the True Silver Champion. This one kills the Light Warden. But clerics are scary because if clerics are able to, like if he gets another circle, my stuff is damaged too. This one kills a cleric, but do I kill a cleric or do I kill an acolyte? I think I kill the cleric. I'm more scared of clerics than the acolyte. Because he has not had a pyromancer. If he had a pyromancer, he would have used a pyromancer. There have been great spots to use pyromancer here. So, none of these cards can be a Pyromancer. Psycho Pump. Ouch. Painful Psycho Pump. Also, great Resurrects from the Psycho Pump on the Tall Beer. And a great Silence. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, Siamat can kill this Tall Beer still. See, but here we go. It's going to be a rush wind fury. You see, I'm at wind fury. Crystallogy might pick up a secret keeper. Then secret keeper redemption could work. Hi, right? 
Is this a mirror or is this going to be a holy rat paladin? Keep three cards, which is a little bit scary. Here, I got the secret keeper. That's why I kept the redemption. Although secret keeper was by no means guaranteed. It's Murlox. Holy guacamole, it's Murlox. Maybe I could have went with the Mecha Roo too. If he coins like a wall leader to trade that or something. Okay, he didn't use wall leader to trade. That was good at least. So then what do I do? Because I could get some secrets. But they are not going to buff the secret keeper. Or I could get Finley and Mekaru on this board and trade away the Murloc. But he kept that card, so there should be a Prismatic Lens coming soon. How do I survive that? That's going to be a problem. Perhaps Sir Finley can help. 2 1 1 recruits. Yeah, I, think, I think there will be a lot of battling for this board. Let's let's turn my turn myself into an old paladin now. Let's see about this. So next turn I have the option to replicating menace here. That's going to be coin prismatic lens though. Okay. They don't always get the good stuff. Let's cast. I get the auto defense matrix and a pair of random auto defense matrix. One random paladin secret on top. That's a redemption. Start getting some minions on this board. Then let's see. Did he get tipped the scales? And if he did, is it cheap enough? He did, and it's cheap enough. He gets a charge, Murloc. That might be headed towards my face. I don't have anything to prevent it from hitting me in the face. So that will be the best direction for it to go to. Okay. I can get another secret. Repentance. But repentance isn't very good. Problems, problems. And these will draw almost guaranteed war leaders or something like that. Because of the current situation. I will get four minions out of this. I hit that into the tide caller. The big thing is if he finds another cold light seer, buffs up the health of everything. That's going to be nasty. But I have to use the replicating menace here. But I have to trade away this one because this one is really, really scary. I get a few minions out of that. I need to trade there. I think I need to trade here. So trading like that. Repentance or the defense matrix redemption is not going to be. I mean, Cold Light Seer is such a huge problem for me right now. If you can get more held on these Murlocs. Repentance doesn't really doesn't really bother him. Okay, so so far not too bad. That's the redemption. I get a lot of this stuff back. Okay, Kings really is not helping me. Well, this is hero power. I still need to use the Kings, obviously. I'm not really... I mean, he will get to draw those Murlocs, so I can't really help that. Now Kings Omek here. That Meg is going to kill the 3 e 4 Because that looks really nasty. I want to kill this 3-1. That looks pretty nasty too. And I use this to kill that 2-1. But it does look like I'm losing this, obviously. 
for obvious reasons. The prismatic lens is very powerful. I mean, theoretically I could find Consecration. If he can't find the Cold Lights here, but he will find the Cold Lights here because there are no more cards left. So Cold Lights here will inevitably be found. Does he get a new hero power? He does. Okay. And for 7 mana, I have both of my 8 mana cards in hand. Healing is a very surprising hero power. Well, he might also just play for the Nomi. Well, Zephyrus can give me a board clear for Nomi, if I could survive that long. It's unlikely that I can, but it could. Like here comes the... Here comes the real punish. Okay, I would need like a Consecration top deck here. I'm not going to say no to a Consecration top deck. Alright. We got rid of the Grimscale Oracles. So then there's the War Leaders left. And there's a Cold Light Seer left. Do I need to play Octosari or do I need to play Tyrion? That's a big... Well, he can just ignore the Octosari and not let me draw. He has his Zepris too. Oh dear, oh dear. What is he looking for from the Zepris here? I'm actually a little surprised that he even played it. Maybe a hard removal piece for the Tyrion. Could be. I could still swarm. I mean, I could play Micro Mummy, War Leader, Hero Power, or I can try to play Tyrion. Right now, I would still also have enough time to play the Octosari. He has the Cold Light. He has another Cold Light Seer. It's probably in hand. He can he get a lot of held on these Murlocs. So War Leader, Micro Mummy. These are not going to kill those Murlocs. Three different plays available. But what if he just swarms the board next turn? I think I need to just play all of this stuff out there. I think I need a white board. I don't think I can kill off my Octosari. He can just ignore it. And then if I play Octosari, he plays a white board. Then next turn he goes face. I might try to go Tyrion then. But if I can't get rid of any of the stuff on that board. It's going to be very hard to make good use of Tyrion either. Oh boy, Murlox cost one. That's the kind of swarming that I was afraid of. And he has Leroy. So there's definitely Leroy in that deck. And then there's that card from Zepris, which can also be damage. So here I need to play the Tyrion. Put your faith in the light. I need to play the Noble Sacrifice. But how do I get through this otherwise? I mean, I have to kill both of the War Leaders. Obviously to get rid of the buffs. I need to kill this War Leader here. I need to kill this War Leader here. The only thing I can kill after those is the tree to here. But I'm very likely dead now. Is there actually... Am I always dead because he has Leroy? Leroy plus 10. Noble Sacrifice technically keeps me alive. True, just Leroy. But Leroy plus true silver is always lethal. And he should have Leroy plus true silver. So I guess I will inevitably die. I thought I didn't die yet, but... Going down to two is not very promising. I don't have a way to heal. I have one mech alive on the board, so I can kill one of those minions, but that's not enough. Yeah, lost. I gave it my all. 
probably not keeping redemption without any useful minions. Well, playing some meme decks that, according to statistics, are actually winning games on the ladder, even though they shouldn't. Alright, let's convert some stored energy. That's just the way life goes. I can't get rid of the... I can't get rid of the secret. I mean, if it's pressure plate, I might, like, get rid of it with the coin, but... Well, he can't play Hyena yet this turn, so that's an upside. Let's try to go in here. So it's not pressure plate. Snakes are pretty annoying. I think I probably need to play the replicating menace here. That bypass is snipe. Then I can kill this one. I see if there are snakes. There are no snakes. And this one goes face. So rat trap or snipe is the current secret. Right, and now there's a random secret to go with that. It could be an explosive trap, that might be the reason he did this. I don't really want to play the Bell Ring Sentry out there just to get sniped. If it's a pressure plate, I still think this is a king's turn. If it's a pressure plate, it's only one in four for that to do things. There could be an explosive trap, of course, it turns out that there is. Do I kill this one? I might actually kill that one. Might be fine. Oh dear, Hunter's back. So much value. Random secret. Well, I guess we're about to find out what the random secret is. Let's find out what the random secret is. It's another explosive trap. That's good for him. Then there's Rat or Snipe. Now I'll try the Bell Ring as entry. And it is the snipe. Well, I get rid of some secrets from the deck. Redemption, Noble Sacrifice. Oh no, not a great mix. I'll play the Auto Defense Matrix out there too, so that the Noble Sacrifice doesn't immediately get killed. The worst, worst mix of secrets. I would assume that he tries to hit face. Then there's the Noble Sacrifice with the Auto Defense Matrix. So it doesn't get killed, so it doesn't get redeemed. So I don't want it redeemed. So this one will then trade here. Then I can play Ziliax. And never surrender. Because I'd rather have Ziliax redeemed. If he's able to kill it, he should be able to kill it. Okay, now he gives it a little bit more health. I mean, I'm cool with that. Thing is, just the moment I play some other minions, then they are going to be the ones who are going to be redeemed. And that could be another freezing trap. Well, I haven't seen a freezing trap actually, so that could be a freezing trap. We'll check it with the Siamat. Siamat will have Rush. And Wind Fury. So Siamat hits there. If it's freezing trap, then Siamat is going to get frozen. Oh no, it is snakes. Not my favorite thing ever. I'll probably kill a couple of them with that one and then I'll hit face with the Ziliax. Now of course a Mark or kill commander or something and kill the Siamat. And the Siamat will come back as a 6-1. Oh dear, Zepris. Zepris time. What is he going to pick up? Some kind of removal? Silence. We'll see. He has to know it's redemption. 
Like, have we any Grandmasters? Yeah, but so it hasn't been very interesting. Okay, you knew that was going to get redeemed. So what was the what was the next thing that you wanted to do? Oh, that. Is that even good? Well, I have the option to play the Octosari here. I'm going to overdraw some cards, but I will get a lot of cards from that. I don't think I might a little bit of overdrawing. I still haven't seen his freezing drop though. What if he can freeze the Octosari? That would be most inconvenient. It's been explosive and snake and snipe. So if he plays another secret. Oh, it's a random secret too. And then a non-random secret. Oh dear. So if there's a freezing trap, that's a problem. Put your faith in the light. I think it's Tyrion and Mekaru time. And I don't think I can attack Octosari into a potential freezing trap now. We'll see about the freezing next turn. Unity. Alright, a bit of Ziliaxing. Can he kill both forms of the Mecharu? I mean, there's a Tyrion on the way. That's the big question, really. So far, not. Is there a lethal here? This is 14. There could also be a misdirection, you know. That's probably the freezing trap. There was no freezing trap. I have been bamboozled. So pressure play threat trap. It's going to kill the Ziliax. Could be misdirection, though well, that's pretty unlikely. Was a misdirection. Painful. It sometimes happens. So I have played one card so far this turn. Tyrion is going face. I'll play the Risa. I don't hero power. Maybe I should have hero power, but I was thinking it's bad for unleash purposes. Alright, see Amat coming. Rush Divine Shield probably. That was pretty unlucky that misdirection, because there were plenty of targets. But I just couldn't hit hit any of the good ones. But now is this lethal? 11, 16, 17 damage. And this is just lethal. Ogier over here. Push face. Leroy Jenkins. Push face. Weapon push face. Octos are winning a game. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.